There's always something going on on Grandpa's farm, a place where you're always welcome. Come on, Lily, let's go feed. I'm going to go buy plants for the garden. Do you have any Roma tomatoes or the Amish paste? There's, that one is um, somewhere on the back wall. I'd have to look and then the Aromas. Third table to the end down there. Thank you. Amish paste, here we go. Musky melon. And zucchini. Gadzooks. Black beauty. <clears throat> Broccoli. I don't think so. I'm trying to find those. I thought I saw super sweets. Yeah, I guess you were on my way. Yeah, yes, you yeah, were. Right See that? <laughs> Try to get these unfolded here. A couple of these super sweets. I'm going to try them. Yeah, me too. I think I already got one at home, but they look like they might be really good. <clears throat> Fortunately, they look a little bit maybe stressed. Probably got a little frost damage from last night. But that's right. I got a good place to keep them. Oh, some herbies. Herbaceous. Oh, really? Bay leaf? Wow. Okay. That's a plain old sweet basil. A little purple basil. Put a little color in the pot. Some gentle easy basil. Huh. A little boxwood basil. Never seen that one before. Some English thyme. Some more thyme. Good. <laughs> Sorry, we're trying to figure that out. I got that, and what's on that cart? All right. Did you do all of them individually? I'll just sit here and wait. All right. Good, comfortable seat here on your soil. Yeah. All right. You're in there. Uh, 
You know, she's only got the one thing there if you want to get her first. Uh, if you're fine with that, yeah. Yeah, I can help you. You only got the one little thing, so shouldn't take you but a moment. Thank you. I have to add a dollar thirty-nine on there. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it is good. It reminds me of my childhood. Yeah. When I was a kid, my mom got a Hires root beer kit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we made some root beer. It kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, I don't really drink pop, but if I do, it's root beer. <laughs> Carry this for you? Please, right. that'd be great. I'm not far, I'm the first vehicle. Could you grab that bag of soil too? Yep, I got it. That'd be great. Yep, have a good one. Thank you. Hey kids, Grandpa here. I am thrilled to bring out a great healthy product like my own goat milk soap. Designed and manufactured from the safest and finest ingredients I could find, my soaps contain olive oil, palm oil, coconut oil, sweet almond oil, and of course goat's milk. Goat's milk soap will not dry out your skin like many other soaps. This is important in keeping skin naturally moisturized to keep it healthy. Prices and ordering information are in the description down below. Thanks for trying Grandpa's Farms Goat Milk Soaps. Remember, 100% money back guarantee. Oh, hey kids, what's going on? <laughs> How's everything out there in YouTube land today? Yeah, well, old Grandpa finally got access to the garage. Uh, old Doug moved out. And so I got a lot of projects going on. I uh, filled all these cups with seed. I've got some of the seeds already in some of these cups. Those cups are waiting to be seeds. Got a big seed order coming from Baker Creek. Hopefully that'll get here pretty soon. We got some soil here ready to go. Uh, did make some changes, different things. We moved the babies out here. Yeah, the chicky babes. Look at that, huh? The chicky babes are now here. So they got their food and their water and... They can get around as they need to. They're almost feathered enough to go outside. But with this really cold weather we've been having, I'm not really, calm down. With this really cold weather that we're having, I'm not ready to put them outside just yet. Plus, I got to build a, I got to build a chicken tractor or something to put them in. So, a lot of construction projects going to happen here real quick. A little bit more of an update. Is the garden coming along? Well, here you go. Look at this stuff, huh? Isn't that cool? That's the beginnings of the garden, the uh, plants that we bought. We got more seeds coming, like I said, because we weren't able to buy all the plants that we wanted. Uh, but we got a lot of stuff coming and going. So out here with a little heat lamp, got some water on them. <clears throat> I got to get a bit more heat going out here for tonight because it's supposed to get down to a frost warning again, isn't it, Lily? Is it going to frost tonight? Yeah, you like cold weather, but... Right now, I have access to this part of the garage. There's still some of the Doug stuff here I'm going to throw out yet, that chair and a couple of three other things, but looks like we're well on our way. Now, I want to point out to you here this gorilla cart. I gave a lot of thought to this gorilla cart. I tell you what, I was thinking about a wheelbarrow. I thought, man, a wheelbarrow would be the right thing for me to get because, you know, I'm getting old and I'm fat and out of shape and when you move material with a wheelbarrow you know you got to grab the handles and you're you're using your legs and your back and your balance and trying to keep the wheelbarrow stable and all that and that's fine I could still do that but the question became why this gorilla cart rated to be able to carry 600 pounds I wouldn't want to put 600 pounds in it but I have to admit I assembled it yesterday, and while assembling it, the frame was pretty solid. I was uh, I was really impressed with the build strength of it. Uh, it has a dump bed. The bed dumps. 
and it holds about as much as a wheelbarrow would. And I don't have to muscle around with it. All I have to do is pull it. I don't keep it balanced. I don't have to. So it'll be easier on my back, I figured. And it was $10 cheaper than a wheelbarrow. So the uh, competition of uh, Gorilla Cart versus Wheelbarrow. For Grandpa right now, the Gorilla Cart won. That's, that's the way we decided to go. Um, I will, in fact, buy a wheelbarrow. Probably not in the too distant future. Because it can do some things that the wagon can't do, like traverse on a side hill. The wagon is great, as long as it's not too steep. But if you're on a grade, you know, if you're on a, if you're on, if you're on a hillside, and you're trying to cross that hillside, and you've only got a narrow footpath, well, you can use just that wheelbarrow wheel, you know, and then you keep it level, and you can, you can traverse, you can traverse a steep slope. Um, and the, the wagon, the wagon can handle a pretty good slope, but at some point it's just going to fall over, especially depending on what kind of load you have in it and how top heavy it is. The wagon is lower to the ground than the wheelbarrow, so it should have more stability in that regard. But because it has two tires, you know, well, four, four wheels, it would ride sideways. So if the weight's up high, it'll tip over. You know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, big changes going on. Lots of stuff happening. Um, <clears throat> Jan ordered more chickens. With everything going on with the COVID-19 stuff, we figured it was time to get some more chickens in. Uh, if nothing else, just so we can have some food. Um, we've been shopping like crazy for a chest freezer. Our upright freezer is packed full. And um, we have been unsuccessful at finding a, um, a chest freezer anywhere. Spoke to a couple guys and they're saying that they don't expect to see any chest freezers available for uh, anywhere from three to six months because of this COVID-19 thing. Everyone was hoarding them and stocking up. They apparently got the idea faster than I did. I wasn't, wasn't on my game. And uh, so we did not buy an extra freezer. I wish we had. So if you can't freeze your your hoard of food that you want to store, you know, we wanted to buy some more meats and stuff, maybe a pig, and put it in the freezer. You only have two options besides freezing. One is you can can stuff, which affects the taste and texture of a lot of stuff. So not the most desirous. I mean, it's fine for a lot of stuff, but for meats, it's not the most desirous of ways of storing meat. Um... Uh, let me say, I guess there's three things. You can also smoke meat so that they can hang uh, unrefrigerated for a while. And uh, and you can do that with a lot of pork products, but not everything. <clears throat> the third option is you can just keep it on the hoof, as it were. So that's why we ordered chickens, and, and uh, Johanna also wants to keep... I got a clutch of uh, duck eggs uh, in the incubator. She wants to hold on to those ducklings and not sell them like we did the last batch. Uh, just so we can have the egg production and so we can have uh, we can have meat should the need arise. Now, I'll tell you, I went to Kroger's yesterday, and uh, I'll put a little video clip in there. I went to Kroger's yesterday, and their egg department, the egg section in the in the walk-in coolers in the back, practically empty. I mean, there was a lot of empty shelves. Kroger's was out of eggs, and of an opinion that they didn't know when they were going to be able to get much more. Apparently, a lot of the uh, egg processing people have killed off their chickens and shut down because they didn't have employees to work. So, pretty scary times, I believe, are ahead of us, kids. I think uh, for those of you guys who are not homesteading, um, you might want to get with the program. You might want to get with the program. Calling around the hatcheries and looking to buy baby chicks and baby ducks, they're sold out. So it may even be too late for people to be able to go get chickens and ducks. Um, check your local, check your local listings. Check your home, to your uh, um, what is it, Craigslist or Marketplace, and see if you can find some local person like me who's hatching. Um, that's what that's what we've got going on. We've got uh, some Dominique breed. They're uh, kind of like a, a ro well, they're like a, a what a, a Plymouth Rock. They look like a Plymouth Rock in that they've got the, the speckled feathering. Uh, pretty bird, old world bird. Goes back to the original settlers on the Mayflower, actually.
These are the Dominiques. Known as one of the first breeds of chickens established in America, these birds do very well in both hot and cold climates. The black and white birds are great foragers, have rose combs, and lay medium brown eggs. The average mature weight of roosters is 6.5 pounds, and the average mature weight of hens is 4.5 pounds. Um, very good combination meat and uh, layer. So we've got a dozen of those coming, I believe. But yeah, even here on our little urban lot, we're going to get chick more chickens and more ducks. Unfortunately, there's no room for uh, a pig, a goat, and a cow. But <laughs> believe me, if we could, we would. But we just we don't have enough for that. So. Well, how about them toad suckers? Ain't they sappy? Sucking them toads all sure make them happy. Hug them mug of toad suckers way down south. Sticking them sucky toads in they mouth. I be a toad sucker knowing a duck it. You just find an old toad and you rare back and suck it. Folks, you have a good day. Bye.